Okay, so I was asked yesterday to go through a few of the questions that are in the past paper questions. So we're trying question 2B part 3 and then questions 4 and 5. So I couldn't do it because I really need my mini whiteboard and be able to draw. Um, and so I'm hoping that this is going to work today. So it shouldn't take us too long. So question B, 2B part 3 says, draw the skeletal formula of the organic product formed when bromine is added to citronello. Okay, so you need to look back at what citronello is like, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So if we're looking at this one, eight carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. Can you see that? My thing. Um, it has a methyl group coming off number two carbon. It has a double bond between carbons two and three. It has a methyl group of which one's that one on? So that's one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four. So not that one. That one. That one there. Okay, like that. And then it has an OH group off the end one, like that. Okay. So that's my citronella, and it asks us to draw the skeletal formula for when this reacts with bromine. So remember, this is an alkene. When we react an alkene with, a, with bromine, the double bond breaks, and the bromine adds across the double bond, bromine in here, and a bromine in there. So that's your answer to, that's 2B part Okay, so that's 2B part three. Okay, let's have a go at number four, which is a bit more complicated. So number 2B part three was relatively straightforward. So um, you're gonna have to get your own um, questions up for this. I can't work out how to do it up on my screen at the same time as me writing on here. Okay, so this is question four from the past paper questions. Okay. Um, by the way, this is not easy for me to do. So if at all possible, you can try and manage to answer the questions without me needing to do this. I have asked that I'll be allowed to actually put me up on the video live so that I can do this with you while we're going through questions. But at the minute, the school is saying no live video or audio from teachers. So this is the only way I can do it at the moment. Right, so it says, let me read my question. An analytical chemist was provided with a compound J, which has an unbranched carbon skeleton. So we know it's not got any branches in it. That's important information. After analysis, the chemist observed the following results. So it had a broad absorption at 3,350 centimeters to the minus one so already that is making me think oh if you have a look at your data sheet an oh in an alcohol has a broad abs absorption at that point it would say very broad if it was hang on a minute very broad if it was um uh, carboxylic acid and then it also tells me percentage composition by mass so uh, that should scream at you empirical formula comp uh, calculation. So let's write down what we've got. We've got carbon, we've got a hydrogen, and we've got an oxygen. Yeah, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We've got 70.59% carbon, 13.72% hydrogen, and 15 point, was that six nine? Six nine percent um, oxygen. Right, the last bit you actually wouldn't have known, but uh, mass spectrometry in molecular IM peak is 102. So that means my MR, and we hope this is, we also told is my MR is 102. When we do the next lesson, that will come on to that one. Okay, so don't worry too much about that one. Right, remember empirical formulas? First thing you do is you divide by the AR of each one of the things. So this is 12. So I'm dividing that by 12. Hydrogen is 1. So I'm going to divide that 1 by 1. And oxygen is 16. So I'm going to divide that 1 by 16. I can do this one off by heart. I've got a tiny pause while I get my calculator out. 
and do these ones. So 70.59 divided by 12 equals, so that's 5.8825. Remember my rules, don't ever round up until the last point. So 15.69 divided by 16 equals, this one is 0.98. 0625. Right, you look at all those numbers, you find the smallest one. So this is my smallest number, yeah? So I'm going to divide all of them. So divide by the smallest is my next step, yeah? Divide by the smallest. So I'm going to divide this one by the smallest. Okay. So this is not too difficult. You should have been able to do this bit, okay? Given percentages of each um, atom, it should scream at you to do a percentage uh, empirical formula calculation. Right, I'm gonna to need to do a little bit of maths again, okay? So that's obviously one. Let me just quickly do this one. So 5.8825 divided by 0 0.980625 equals, right, this is 5.99. So I'm gonna round that up immediately to six. Right, let's do 13. 13. 0.72 divided by 0 0.980625 equals, right, that's 13.99, so that's automatically going to round up to 14. Okay, so here we go. Here's my ratio, 16 to 14 to 1. So that means I've got six carbons, 14 hydrogens, and one oxygen. Now, remember, we said from the, um, on the, the information given me in the question, I'll just go that back up again and get that back up. It tells me that it has a broad absorption at 3,350, okay, which we already thought was going to be an OH, so a, an alcohol. So I'm just gonna write this slightly differently. I'm gonna put H13OH. Okay, it's more likely to be like that. It's more likely to be an alcohol. Right, now we just need to just double check because we're told my MR is 102. So let's have a quick look at that one. Um, oh gosh, right, needs my, my, so I need six, six, six lots of 12 is 72, plus 13 is 85 plus 16 is 101, plus one, 102. See, so this actually has my MR, so this is not only my empirical formula, it's also my molecular formula. Right, what does the question ask us to do? So we've worked out what it is. What does it ask us to do? Hang on a second, get the question back up again. So it asks us to use this information to suggest all possible structures for the unbranched compound J. In your answer, you should make clear how your explanation is linked to the evidence. So you, in all, it's eight marks, it's quite a lot of marks to get. So obviously you get some marks for your empirical formula calculation. You get some marks for saying, okay, your MR is 102, so we can work out this is my molecular formula, not just my empirical formula. It is unbranched and it says all possible structures so it's an alcohol so we know that it has to have an oh and we need to have six carbons so in my opinion there's at least three possible places you can put that oh one two three four five six sorry my pen's running out one two three four five six one two three four five six right i can put the oh on number one or i can put the oh on number two or I can put the OH on number three. As soon as I try and put it on number four, remember if I counted from this, this end, well, ooh, like that, it would be the same as number three. If I put it on this one, it'd be the same as that one, counting from the other end, and obviously I'll put it on there as number one. So there's three possible, here we go, three possible answers that you can get. So this was question four. Okay, so that's eight marks that you can get. Use the mark scheme to work out how many you might, might have got for that. Right, last but not least, last, last one's easier. Okay, um, so that one, I thought one I think was a little tricky, particularly if you didn't understand that the 102 was giving you the MR of your, um, those of you who did um, triple, 
would probably remember that. The molecular iron peak, the furthest peak to the right, we'll do that next week. Okay, right, question five. Since, let's look at question five. So it says, ethanol was analysed by ethanol, so that's an aldehyde, okay, was analysed by infrared spectroscopy. Use your data sheet to justify which of the three spectra shown. In fact, I don't even need my mini whiteboard for this one. Okay, so it's, um, spectrum A. Look at A. It's got that really broad um, absorption at the beginning, so broad that the OH has swallowed up the CH, okay? So that means that that one's a carboxylic acid. So spectrum A is a carboxylic acid, but it said ethanol, not ethanoic acid. So we want an aldehyde, not a carboxylic acid. So it's not spectrum A. If we look at spectrum B, that is also, is that one also? Yes, that's very broad again. It's so, it, all, it almost has a double dip, but not quite. Okay, it's so broad that the OH has kind of swallowed up the little CH, although you can see the little jagged bit there. So that's also a carboxylic acid. So that is definitely, so B is also not there. So therefore the answer must be C. Can you see in C, you've only got the CH at around, what's that, at about 2,800-ish, yeah? And then you've got your big peak that splits the middle. Sorry, I've only got it on my phone here, but you'll have it on your thing, okay? So there's a, a big peak that's just about 70, 1,725 or something like that. That's your C double bond O in your aldehyde. Okay, so there's only three marks there. So it says ethanol is most likely to be shown by spectrum three, three C rather because, and you then talk about the fact that it doesn't have that big broad um, absorption at the beginning, which would indicate the other two are carboxylic acids, but it does have the, the peak in the middle, which indicates that you've got a C double bond O. So hopefully that's been helpful. Um, yeah, and I will see you next week. How do I stop this now? Okay, there you go.